as always. <laughs> I can't use a phone, because every time I use a phone, it's just ring, 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 especially when we're about to hit the, the point. Is this about C19, you know, Century 19, I should call it? <laughs> or is this about something else? Now, considering that um, all of the FE, that is Flat Earth videos, have been taken down off YouTube, is it because most of the Flat Earth videos are informational videos and not people basically showing their faces up so that 5G technology can do some facial recognitions etc 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 a combination of both it's a lot of questions and the only person that can answer the question for you is you I can give you all of the answers that I have in my head they may not be answers for you that's why we have conversations and questions rather than conversations and answers is it a Jamaican thing? maybe oh yeah answer question with question for. <laughs> why are you answering the question with the question? so worried because for some time I used to think the summer solstice was in July and it's actually in June and then I observed Kepa Ankh and you know it looks like it's over England at a certain time of day and I'm like isn't Kepa Ankh supposed to be going south after the summer solstice, like on towards the winter solstice to the Tropic of Capricorn. That's if you are a um, flat earther, then you understand the tropic lines. Um, if you're not, you know, of the comedic principles of words and names, then I'm referring to the sun in the sky when I say Kaparank. What problems does this pose? Well, Kepa Ankh continues to move in its current trajectory, then we're looking at this thing being over the North Pole, maybe by the next summer solstice. As if to say that the winter solstice, everyone's going to recognize that we do live on a flat surface, that the sun is above our heads, not too far, probably 50 miles above our heads. My personal perspective has calculated roughly 50 miles above our heads, roughly five miles in diameter. And on a normal day, traveling at 200 miles an hour to give you a 24 hour day on the spring and autumn equinox of a perfect 12 hour light and darkness cycle which balances everything that flat earthers have to say except most people are like but that doesn't make sense take a torch go in your bedroom at night turn off the light in your bedroom <laughs> and um let's see if i've got a torch here maybe i can help you <coughs> shine that light on the floor and just walk around the room yeah it's called the sun test fact that we have sunspots on the ocean floor this is what I tested this thing it's not even 360 degrees of light that also helps you to solve the problem it's amazing that you get a watch you know to tell the time and its design would be as if the seconds minutes and hour hands followed the Sun the moon and something else is there two moons? Is the dark side of the moon actually a dark object, which is a twin to the moon that you see as a light object? And this whole time, you were told there was only one. 
that's some amazing questions, you know. But speculation to one side, questions need to be asked. So if you don't ask, there is no speculation. Huh? Speculation to one side. You can't you can't put speculation to one side into a perspective. It's 360 multiplied by 360 degrees. So rather unfortunate for the FM team who have a total capacity of 33 degrees apparently. <laughs> so it's that it's an acute angle in comparison to the 360 degrees that truly makes one dimensional surface of light to become a two-dimensional thing in the sense that you can see it now and then you have to multiply each degree by 360 degrees to create an elliptical orb just to create a spherical object you have to multiply 360 by 360 Okay. You don't add them together. You multiply them. It's a lot of angles. It's a lot of angles to cover to, to cover to say that you are the absolute knowledge of anything and everything. And no human on earth alive <laughs> has that magnitude of wise mind. So, Kepa Onk goes to the centre of the planet, according to Effie. What effect does that have on the environment? Well, the sun stood still for one day. What effect would it have on the environment? Well, the animals would definitely behave differently. They'd probably all disappear. So if you notice that the birds aren't chirping anymore, you should start to worry. You notice that the cats have all gone because you see cats always disappear three days before an earthquake. You should definitely get moving. If you notice that, you don't even see the rodents about the building. Yeah, probably too late. <laughs> too late for what? Too late to get yourself out of the area that you're in. There is no escape from this, guys. It's, that's my whole point. Animals know where to go because they are in tune with the earth. We're not. So my proposal is not my proposal. My proposal was instructions that were given from the person, the persona person, who had told me that the sun changes direction. And that person said they seen the sun change direction five times. From east, rising in the east, rising in the west, rising in the east, rising in the west, rising in the east. You have to be very old to see the sun change direction once and then stay alive long enough to see the sun change direction again. Because if it happened every 2,000 years, we'd know about it. If it happened every 12,000 years, we probably wouldn't know about it. And if it happened every 25,000 years, we definitely would not know about it. Only because for the last 12,000 years, there has been... A slow rise to consciousness. The world we live in today, the social society we have today is pretty much still Neanderthal in comparison to the true potential of all humanity. Sorry you superseded scientists that you call yourselves nerds and geeks and you have all of this super technology. You guys are brilliantly smart and absolutely incredibly stupid at the same time. It's just like if there is a there's a law that made it possible for your skin to remain attached to your body so that you could conduct your experiment but you continuously went to change that law we would have to question then your psychological stability and now for the entire science community, this question must be put forward. Are you guys psychologically sane as it's like to be put in public, to be politically correct? Would you be psychologically sane if everything you tried to do 
was the process of taking the skin off your body. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. Okay. So, I don't even want to ask you why you continue to do so, that's your free will, your prerogative, as you call it. Mm. And then those laws that allow the skin to remain on your body, allow your bones to form together with, you know, these weird gels, you know, and then allow veins to exist so that blood can flow around your body and bring hydrogen and oxygen and all of these things, you know, carbon, copper, calcium. Oh yeah, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. Iron. Oh my days. Well, you could name all of these elements on the periodic table all you wanted to. The bottom line is the atom that magnetically pulled the elements together for the compound that you're aware of. That atom, as you call it, is a higher intelligence than every human I have ever known, ever will know, or could ever exist. Because without the intelligence inside the atom performing how it did, you wouldn't even have the common sense to pick up a microscope, to even create a microscope to observe this thing. But if you don't respect yourself, you wouldn't respect another person, would you? No. You'd put your knee in their neck, your knee, your knee in their head, as if there was a wild animal. <clears throat> oh, you don't even respect the wild animals either, do you? No, oh, you just constantly kill them out until they're extinct. And what's the reason? I killed the last one! It's a glory hunt. Wow. I'm still trying to find the common sense in all of this. I am seriously, seriously trying to find the common sense in all of these actions. And this is where you get the... Um, what would you call this? Philosophical sayings that what is right for one is wrong for another and what is right for that other is wrong for the first one, blah, blah, blah. There is no such thing as right or wrong. That's true to an extent. It's true to an extent. The extent that it's true to is you are right to express yourself if that self is the chaotic primordial energy that existed before order and you have manifested now into the physical world that was created by order and you by your own existence manifest chaos then by all means you're going to be chaotic and there is not much that the orderist ones can do about it but when you the chaotic one claim to be the order now that's just out of order which is what's going on right now. A complete outer order perspective of people claiming to be the order of Earth. Okay then. Maybe that's why Kepler Unk decided to move to teach you guys all a lesson. Maybe it was just time. Maybe you knew this time was coming and you've been hiding it from everyone. And you gave us... C-19, to cover the fact. You spray in chemtrails in the air to bring clouds to cover the fact. Because the late, great Robert Nesta Marley said, you can fool some people sometimes, you can't fool all the people all the time. And long live Bunny Whaler for saying, you can fool some people sometimes, but you can't fool all the people all the time. Rest in peace, the late, great Peter Tosh, for saying you can fool some people sometimes, but you cannot fool all the people all the time. And because of these great, powerful hip-hop songs like Get Up, Stand Up, I don't think it was reggae, that's my personal opinion, it's my favourite hip-hop song. Just tell by the way how the chorus drops. Get up, stand up, stand up for your right. That funk, that creative hip hop, you know. 
because of those songs, the late great Robert Nesta Marley was a target for control, infiltrate, assassinate gang. I get it. Your name says it all. Control, infiltrate, assassinate. Assassinate, infiltrate, control. Whatever direct... Those are the three things. That's the three objectives. That's what they really mean. Yeah? <laughs> sad, in it? It's interesting. But it's sad to me and my circle of people. To that circle of people, it's pretty brilliant. We defend the democracy. Make this country great again. I'm sorry. Did you say there was something great about kidnapping people? The, the law today says if you get caught for kidnaps, you're probably going to do a 10, 15 year sentence. Someone give me the correct answer in the comments box. Uh, oh, yeah. Rape. There's something great about rape. Child molestation. What is great about child molestation? I'm trying to comprehend the, the logic behind these thoughts that the people are having. Trying to comprehend the logic. It's difficult. Forced labour. What is great about taking a whip and whipping someone to make sure that they do what you want them to do? What's great about that? Oh, the power. I have the power. E man. <laughs> yeah, it must be one of those ego chips, right? Okay. The list can go on. I'm just trying to figure out what's great about these things. I think the greatest accomplishment was lying to the people that you stole them from one land and brought them to another. That was the greatest part about it. De indefinitely, without a question or fail. The whole world was not only duped into believing that the son of G Julius Caesar and Cleopatra the Seventh, known as Jesus Christ, was blonde hair and blue eyes, when Bob Marley clearly didn't have blonde hair and blue eyes, and his mum was black, and his dad was white. But you have the great capacity to come and tell everybody that the king that should have governed Rome and the River Nile, who you assassinated, or tried to assassinate, whatever, this, however you guys believe in this story, because there are many Al-Kebulan children who do not accept that a half Al-Kebulan, half Caucasian being could be the king of both lands. So you see how stigmatic racism is in the entire psychology, psychology of us today. It's, it's, it's disgusting, but we accept Bob Marley, won't we? Mm. Your mum Bob Marley was black. Okay then, I'm not black. Please do not define me by such a derogatory word as the so-called N-word is defined as a derogatory word because that's basically what you're doing. Absent of colour and light, that's what they're saying. So, so I've just put them on. So you to tell me which one is absent of colour or light, which one of them. Well, that's in the definition. The lie that you kidnapped people from one continent and brought all of them to another continent, wow, that was incredibly great. Like, how great was that lie? You have not been able to accomplish anything for yourselves. We did it for you. In fact, the most ancient relics in your homeland were made by aliens and not you. You have not been able to do anything. You worthless pieces of crap. That's how great the lie is. People who have um, what's that word? What's the word I'm looking for? I need to put my charger in. You might hear a little buzz. Work with me here. People who have um, inferiority complexes come up with such ridiculous crap. Trying my most not to swear so that the children can hear. Yeah? People who have 
issues inside themselves, issues whereas they feel inferior compared to the person they're standing next to or someone across the road. Maybe that person's 20 stones of muscle and I'm 10 stones of not muscle and I feel like that person would break me into pieces if they punched me. That kind of inferior, you know, complex and then I'm going to do whatever it takes to destroy that, so, you know, that brolic guy psychologically using physical weapons or whatever it takes and he has done absolutely nothing to me. Nothing. He's just stood over there, minding his own business, looking after his family, but I envied his 20 stones of muscle. Because I thought, well, maybe my woman would be more attracted to him. 